so good to be back. I have been a little bit, for some of you that know, I have been a little bit absent, sort of, <laughs> for two weeks. I actually am just getting over a kidney, a kidney infection, and I think it's interesting that it happened under the full moon of Libra, because Libra rules the kidneys. Something's happening. Something's happening. Hello, Lewis. How are you? Hey, Sol, how's it going? So good to see you guys again. Oh, there's so many amazing things coming, and I just wanted to hop on. Missed seeing you, too. I just wanted to hop on, see how you guys are doing, let you know the updates that are happening, and give you a little bit of a rundown of really how dreaming and lucid dreaming has changed my life and how you can use it to change your life as well. So for those of you who do not know me or if this is your first time here on my page, my name is Haley Lynn, also known as The Lucid Mystic on Instagram and YouTube, and I am a lucid dreaming and out-of-body experience coach. I help people induce altered states of consciousness for life transformation, self-discovery, and healing. So for some of you that know my story, you know that I actually got started on lucid dreaming a, a while ago, years and years and years ago, because I had an incurable stomach condition that the doctors couldn't figure out what was going on. I was on eight medications, I was in the ER probably every other day, and it was the worst pain that I could ever explain to you. And I'm sure some of you are familiar with the run, the run around that we sometimes get when we're going from doctor to doctor to specialist to specialist and people are just trying to figure out what's going on with you. Well, I experienced that for years and it took over my life. I couldn't hold any jobs. I was completely miserable. As soon as I would wake up in the morning, I'd feel really intense, agonizing pain. It was literally the worst pain that I could ever, ever explain. Hey, so good to see you. How are you guys? And I'm sure that some of you have felt kind of hopeless when it comes to, you know, where our life is going or our physical health. Am I going to be like this forever? I can't live like this. That was my thought process was there has to be something that I could do to completely transform my own life since I was not able to f find help elsewhere when I was running from doctor to doctor, specialist to specialist. And when they say, oh, you're going to have this forever, you're, you're not going to be able to get rid of it. You're just going to have to learn how to manage it. When we hear that. Um, when we go to a specialist or a doctor, that makes us feel like there's no hope, right? It makes us feel like that whatever we're dealing with, we're stuck with forever, and it makes us feel broken. It makes us feel damaged. And that's exactly how I felt. But then I really, really got sick of putting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars into all just different things with these different specialists and these doctors. And I was like, you know what? I don't care what they tell me. I don't care that they tell me that I'm not going to be able to heal myself. I don't care that they tell me that I'm going to be stuck with this forever. I just don't accept that. Like, I really just didn't accept that I, di I didn't. So I started calling out to something higher than me. And I just started saying, there has to be something that I can do to take control of my life. There has to be something that I can do to gain my life back, to take my health back, to take control of my life back. And I started having these interesting experiences. Now, I did have dreams and lucid dreams and out-of-body experiences when I was younger. But growing up, going through school with so much anxiety and depression that I started to have less of those experiences and I kind of forgot about them. But after I was going through this huge health crisis that literally took over my life. Again, this was years and years. Like, I was literally throwing up blood. Like, I was on eight medications. It was, it was, it was bad when I say... It was bad. It was bad. I started having these random experiences. Hello, Kenny. Kenny, thank you so much. I started having these random experiences, these little flashes of dreams, these little flashes of lucidity. I would start to get sleep paralysis um, as I was waking up. And th this happens during REM sleep or rapid eye movement. We go into REM every 90 minutes of sleep, and that's when our body gets paralyzed so we don't act out our dreams. And you might have heard about this. You might have experienced this, but this is a natural process we go through. But I didn't really know exactly what was happening. But then when I started to have more of these experiences, I realized, oh my gosh, I've experienced this before. This is what I was experiencing when I was a kid and I couldn't figure out what it was. Um, and I started playing with it a little bit more. And I've read tons of uh, research studies on lucid dreaming and the powerful effect that it has on the brain and the physical body and our psychology. And I realized 
maybe I can do something with this. Maybe I can use lucid dreaming to take back my power, to take back my life, to take back my health. And that's exactly what I did. I had a transformative, amazing lucid dreaming experience where I experienced the most profound placebo healing that I have ever, ever even heard of and experienced. And you can, you can read about these as well. There's tons of anecdotal reports on this placebo healing that we can experience in the lucid dream. And it's curing everything from like PTSD to addictions to breaking habits, you know, curing skin conditions. I mean, this is crazy. And there's lots of studies on this. Hey, Vicky, how's it going? So it's known to the scientific community that lucid dreaming does have a lot of power. And that's why they're starting to do all of these research studies. There's this whole entire like um, study group or something in Stanford that studies lucid dreaming. And... I'm so glad that other people are starting to see how powerful this is. After that one lucid dream, <laughs> after that one lucid dream, I woke up and I didn't have any physical pain. I didn't have any physical pain <laughs> at all. And that was the first day in over eight years that I didn't wake up in agonizing pain. And I said, well, I feel fine. So why don't I just like kind of play with my medication and see if I feel fine, you know, and like, of course, when it starts to hurt or when I start to, you know, have a lot of issues where I like have to go to the ER, I'll start taking my medication again. But something interesting happened. Mm -hmm. I never took those medications since I had that dream. Now, what I recommend to you, if you're playing around with healing within the lucid dream, every once in a while, I just recommend like, doing it again if you if you have been working on like anxiety or insomnia or PTSD or um, anything that you're working on feeling uh, healing physically or emotionally to just every once in a while in a lucid dream do the healing again because I even though I felt fine after that one lucid dream and I still feel fine I still go into the lucid dream and I still do energy work I still do healing I still talk to my subconscious mind and this practice has changed my life more than anything else in the entire world. And I want to tell you why it can change your life. It can transform your business. It can transform your health and just how you live in this waking life, how you sleep and how you dream. Lucid, when you're in a dream, when you're in a lucid dream, hey, Eric, when you are in a lucid dream, your brain does not know that you are dreaming. It actually thinks that you're awake because of how real and interactive the environment is. So when you have a lucid dream, anything that you do in the lucid dream is seven to nine times more powerful than if you did it in the waking state. Because think about it, even when it comes to something like hypnosis or practicing skills, you're not limited by the conscious mind or your physical senses, right? You're experiencing that through the mind, this incredible 3D virtual simulation reality in your mind. So when you taste things, when you practice things, when you work on learning things in the lucid dream, when you do healing, whatever you decide to spend your lucid dreams doing, that is amplified by 700% because you're doing it in the lucid dream. So if you have a business, this is an amazing way to get clarity and insight and answers and ideas from your subconscious mind and beyond. You can literally have like masterminds in your lucid dream and talk to dream characters and pass, you know, chat about ideas that you can create in your business. I have solved so many business problems, problems through my lucid dreams. I even just took a nap yesterday because I was really stuck on this new um, offer that I'm creating. I was, at least I thought I was. And I took a 30 minute nap and I solved it as soon as I woke up. So the process of even dreaming in general can absolutely transform your life. And then when you start to get lucid, you can consciously transform your life in these experiences. So if you have a business, that's something amazing. If you're working on uh, honing in on a skill, so you want to do parkour, or you want to learn how to play guitar, or you, you're an artist, and you want to bring a new level of your creativity to life, you can explore that in the lucid dream. You can call out to your subconscious mind in the lucid dream, how is my health? How do I solve this problem? You can meet archetypes of your own psyche. You can meet your inner anger. You can meet your inner child. You can meet your inner creativity. You can, eat your, you can meet your inner fear, your phobias. 
anything that you want to work on. I actually posted about this a couple days ago. I think it was yesterday, actually. I had a client that was um, suffering from nicotine addiction for like 14 years. And what he did, he went into the lucid dream and I told him that he could call affirmations um, because again, they're way more powerful than the lucid dream because they're going directly to the subconscious mind. You do not have to bypass the conscious mind like we sometimes have to do when we're practicing like waking hypnosis or something. But he took it to a whole never a whole nether level. He was like, well, instead of doing affirmations, where is the source of my addiction? My brain. So maybe I can meet my brain in the lucid dream. He called out to the sky in his lucid dream to meet his brain. And this woman came up. <laughs> it's actually a really funny story. This woman came up to him and she said, hello. And he's like, oh, are you my brain? And she's like, mm-hmm. She's a little bit, a little bit saucy. Um, and he started asking her like how his health was. And she's like, everything seems to be fine with your health, but you do know the one thing that you need to stop. And of course, it was smoking cigarettes for him specifically. So he created a strate strategic plan with his brain in his lucid dream. And he was like, well, can you make it just less appealing to smoke cigarettes? Or could you block out the word cigarettes from my brain or something? And they agreed. They, they had this whole agreement. She's like, yes, I'll help you. He woke up. He did not have any urge to smoke cigarettes even when he planned like well maybe let me go just get a pack at the store to see if i can smoke it and like just not want it like let me see if i can do that when he would go grocery shopping he would forget cigarettes he'd be like as soon as he got home oh my gosh i forgot to get cigarettes so it's almost like his brain helped him block out the word cigarettes and just like the overall like intention to go get cigarettes and this is from one lucid dream, and he hasn't smoked cigarettes in six weeks. He just talked to me the other day about it. And this is how powerful <laughs> lucid dreaming and dreaming is. It has changed my life. I used to suffer with intense anxiety, depression, insomnia, physical pain. And you want to know the only thing that I changed in my practice? Dreaming. Dedicating to dreaming and lucid dreaming and becoming conscious in the one third of our life that we spend asleep. We literally sleep for a third of our lives, which is roughly 30 to 33 years asleep. And we don't want to sleep like a log. We don't just want to be like, oh, you know, I was out like a log last night. No, we don't want to sleep like a log, like a dead piece of tree. We want to sleep like a tree, not a log, aware, conscious. And it's actually so much easier to do than people think. Even when it comes to dream recall, are you someone that has had a hard time remembering your dreams consistently? Are you someone that has never remembered your dreams or you maybe think that you don't dream at all? Well, everybody dreams. It's a natural part of our biology and our evolution. So everybody dreams. But we have to keep in mind that dream recall is a skill that we build. If we don't prioritize our dreams or want to remember them or try to remember them, our brain is not going to keep all of that dream content that we experienced and bring it over to the waking state. It literally just will not because our brain seeks to be efficient, right? And so it's not very efficient to keep all of this memory if we're not going to use it, right? Long time I didn't get a loose dream. Well, that can change my friend so, 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 so quick. And it is my mission. It is my passion. It is my purpose. It is my quest in this lifetime to help you guys live more purposefully and dream lucidly. It is my purpose to do so. So you guys know that I'm here to answer questions. I have a YouTube channel with tons, almost 200 videos on this subject, and we're just getting started. There's so much more to cover. There is so much more to dive into. We are just touching the surface. So I want you all to think about your why. That's what I invite you to do today. What is your why? Why do you want to dream? Why do you want to lucid dream? Why is it important to you? What would you use that state for? Hey, John, much love and lucidity to you, my friend. Thank you again, all of you for joining. Think about your why, because believe it or not, the two most powerful things that you can do for your dreaming practice and your lucid dreaming practice, enthusiasm and determination. That alone can help you dream more 
and it can help you get lucid consistently. If you're excited to go to bed, like I love going to bed because I'm like, oh my gosh, I wonder where I'm going to go tonight. When I, if I do get lucid, what am I going to do? What am I going to ask? Like I, I create this plan. I create this whole plan because my why is important. Your why is important for this practice. So really start to think about that. And also really start to prioritize just your dreams. I just made a post. I'm not sure if you guys saw it about <laughs> nine incredible inventions that actually were inspired by dreams. And if you guys haven't seen that, I would definitely check it out because they are incredible. And the, there are things that have absolutely changed how the collective lives. Like DNA was discovered within a dream, like how the DNA strands are actually formed. The periodic table came within a dream state. As you guys know, probably from the Beatles, the song Yesterday came to them in a dream, came to Lennon in a dream. And there's so much more like, guys, if you haven't checked out that post, I would absolutely check out that post. But I want to inspire you to let you know that when we sleep, it is not just for sleeping and like waking up and not even being conscious of what happened. We have these experiences for a reason. We are meant to use them. We are meant to develop them. And the more aware you are in waking life, the more aware you will be in your dreams. We live how we dream or we sleep how we live, which means whatever habits we have when we're awake, we actually carry those to the dream state. So do you ever stop during the day and just check in with your environment and become very, very conscious and mindful? How often do you ask yourself during the day if you could be dreaming? Even though it seems like weird for us to ask, right? It's like, oh, pff, I know that I'm awake, right? But that habit of always knowing that you're awake actually goes to your dreaming self. And that's why we don't lucid dream because we always assume that we're awake because we always assume that we're awake in waking life. So really notice what your dream self is doing and maybe how you can cultivate more awareness in your dreams. And it all starts from what we can do in the waking state. This practice has transformed my life and so many people's lives. And I just did an interview with my friend Leah yesterday on this, and it was so good. It's up on my YouTube channel if you guys haven't checked it out. But within the lucid dream, like I was saying, we can talk to our subconscious mind. We can reprogram our brain using neuroplasticity to get rid of our fears, our phobias, negative thought patterns, habits, addictions, belief systems, depression, anxiety, insomnia, PTSD. And did you know that lucid dreaming is the most efficient and powerful form for trauma integration? Yeah, yes it is. These things that we spend years working on in waking life, what if I told you that a lot of those could be literally solved or cured or healed within a few lucid dreams? I promise you it can. And it is my goal to help you get there because this practice is so underrated. I don't feel like a lot of people understand what the power of our sleep and our dreams actually holds. And so it's my mission to make this state accessible to you, to make it exciting for you to get lucid and for you to take one third of your life back. Because again, we sleep for a third of our lives, which is roughly 33 years spent asleep. How do you want to spend that time? What if you could totally grow your business and learn new things and integrate trauma and manifest money and situations and opportunities all from your sleep. We're sleeping anyways, right? Like it's not taking any time out of our day. We're just utilizing the time that we're already spending sleeping by, by becoming more conscious and doing this with intention. Well, if you've already experienced it, Mohammed, then you can absolutely experience it again because your brain is already familiar with that state and your brain already knows how to do it. And if you sleep, you dream. And if you dream, you can lose a dream which means if you sleep, you can absolutely lose a dream and it is my goal to help you with that, truly. There are so many things that we can do within this, this state. I've done so much inner child work through my lucid dreams. And you know what's cool about that? Like I love journaling and stuff when it comes to like trauma integration or like inner child work. 
But when I get to become conscious in my dreams and I know that I'm dreaming, that's what a lucid dream is. When you are in a dream and you are completely aware of the fact that you are dreaming as the dream is happening, that's a lucid dream. When you become conscious in your dreams and you can just call it to the sky, I would like to meet my inner child at seven years old or six years old. You can actually see them just like this. You can see the lines on their hands. You can see the sunshine radiating on their skin like it is so real and i can talk with my inner child i can go out to ice cream with her i can aid her in all the ways that she needed me that maybe i wasn't there for her when i was at that age i can heal these wounds of abandonment of guilt of trust of neglect through my lucid dream practice it is the most incredible powerful way to do this trauma work nightmares are actually a very 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 important part of this integration and a lot of people are scared of nightmares but what that really means is that you have things within your subconscious that are ready to be integrated that's why it's being shown to you and we feel fear in our nightmares because our, our subconscious is not trying to scare us it's trying to get us to pay attention how do you feel when you're scared probably very aware of the environment right if you feel fear if you're scared then you will literally be more aware. So the subconscious mind is just trying to get you aware. It's trying to get you to be aware of this stuff that it's ready to integrate. And our shadow is everything that we deny, suppress, or disown. But there's a misconception about the shadow. <clears throat> ne it's, the shadow isn't just all like negative traits or like negative things. The shadow is simply what is yet to be illuminated. And how can we illuminate the shadow? By awareness by a loving awareness. If you've, ha if you've had a nightmare where you became lucid in it, don't wake up. Turn around, stop running, be aware of the nightmare, and it will unfold everything that it wants to tell you. I promise you it won't be scary. Then you can hug the nightmare, embrace whatever was chasing you, and you'll notice that for me, the whole dream either turns to light, they start to smile and turn into some sort of like angelic figure or something. The dream will transform to reflect to you what you have transformed within yourself. This is how powerful it is. This is how powerful dreaming, lucid dreaming, and sleeping is. And we can completely transform our lives. This has been a practice for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years in Tibet, for example. They are very familiar with the powerful effects that lucid dreaming has and dreaming in general. And you guys have might have heard of dream yoga before. That is a Tibetan spiritual practice within the dream state. So there is so much to this. And it's time that we start to really get excited about it and figure out our why. Now that I've told you about some of what's possible through this state, what's your why? Why do you want to do it? And I would love to hear in the comments if you guys want to share your why. Like, why, why do you want to dream? Why do you want to lucid dream? What's the first thing you would do? If you haven't had a lucid dream yet, what is the first thing you're going to do in your lucid dream? What are you going to ask your subconscious? Where are you going to go? What parts of yourself are you going to meet? And if you have had a lucid dream before, what do you plan to do in your next lucid dream? Because we can absolutely, I learned how to drive in the lucid dream, okay? Like, <laughs> like all of my practice with driving was in the lucid dream state. And again, your brain thinks it's actually happening. So you actually learn skills that you can bring to the waking state. You guys have heard me talk about this, but they did a UK sports science study where they had six, or they had like, I can't remember, like 80 athletes or something run, lift weights, and do squats in the lucid dream for 60 days. After 60 days, 81.3% of those athletes increased in speed, accuracy, and muscle mass in the waking state. Yep, yep, yep. So you can practice <laughs> skills and actually gain the skill when you wake up. I use this for my art too. If you write music or compose anything, you can totally use it. You can use it for literally anything. That is why I'm here to tell you that you are not limited when it comes to what you can transform. Mohammed, so when it comes to lucid dreaming and out-of-body experiences, I always recommend that people learn how to lucid dream first because you're practicing staying conscious within REM sleep. 
You're learning how to control and manifest within your environment in the lucid dream. It helps you get over any fears or barriers or belief systems that you may carry over to the out-of-body state because these states are thought responsive, which means as soon as you think something or expect something to happen, it happens. So the lucid dream state is a really amazing practice ground for inducing out-of-body experiences. And I always tell my clients that if you learn how to lucid dream, you can easily learn how to induce out-of-body experiences because a lot of the fundamentals and the techniques are the same. And so in my coaching containers, we go through the lucid dreaming process first, and then we can use what we learn from inducing lucid dreams and induce out-of-body experiences that way. And out-of-body experiences are is a whole nother realm of things. I use that to hang out with my grandpa that has passed away, use it to, to hang out with my dog that's passed away, and I use it to explore, explore things outside of myself. And so those practices really, really go hand in hand. I think I messed up. I faced my fear with anger. Screaming from power, my fear didn't. Mmm, got a lot of traumas on my childhood and I want to know how I can start this lucid dreaming. Mmm, it will change your entire life, I promise you. And I want to tell you guys about something that's actually coming up on May 5th. So we can actually do this together, so we can actually work on this together. So, on May 5th, I'm going to be running a three-day workshop called Intro to Lucid Dreaming. In this workshop, there's going to be three days, but there's also going to be a bonus call. So there's technically four days. In this workshop, you're going to learn the fundamentals of dreaming and lucid dreaming, how to actually build up your dream recall consistently and start to receive really symbolic messages from your dreams, how to build awareness in the dream, which is really building a consistent habit of awareness in the dream, which is obviously going to lead to lucid dreams and I'm going to break down some really amazing techniques in there that you can that you guys can implement now to start inducing lucid dreams and then we're also going to learn how to understand the language of our dreams how to actually decode our dreams how to interpret our dreams and receive the message from the dreamer which the dreamer is the part of our psyche that creates our dreams that grants our requests to get lucid that's the dreamer so everybody has a dreamer and then in the bonus call, it's a little bit of a surprise, but I'm going to show you guys how you can start dreaming outside of REM sleep. So even any time during the day, you can do this practice and you'll be able to induce amazing dreams in different states of consciousness. So again, this is going to start on May 5th. We're going to have four total days together. This is going to take place in a private Facebook group. It is 197 and I do have a link for that as well. I will actually be posting it right after this. So if you guys are interested in signing up for this workshop, either message me personally or look out for the posts that I'm going to make right after this live because I would love to work with you guys on this. It's going to be so incredible. There's going to be so much value in this time together. And I am so, 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 so excited to share this space with you. So again, May 5th, intro to dreaming, four days together. I'm going to post the payment link right after this. It's going to be on my next recent post. And again, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. But I think it's going to be so incredible, so amazing. And I am honestly so excited to get dreaming with you guys and to share this knowledge and to literally help you expand in this waking life and dream more purposefully and lucidly. So again, if you guys have any questions about that, let me know. Keep an eye out on the most recent post after this live and I can't wait to get dreaming with you guys. I am so, 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 so excited. I love you guys so much. Again, let me know if you have any questions at all. Thank you guys so much for joining. I can't wait to see you there. Anyone who signs up, I haven't even released it yet. We've already got two people signed up, so I'm like super pumped about this. And I will see you guys there. And I'll be going live before <laughs> that class as well, so we can still chat. But... I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for joining. Again, let me know if you have any questions at all. And as always, I'm sending you guys endless love and endless lucidity. Bye, guys.